Rise and shine, everyone. Happy Christmas Eve to you all, and welcome to Thailand News Update. In today's news, updates on the 29-year-old Israeli quarantine runaway, plans to open land border between Thailand and Laos in Nong Khai shelf, and airstrikes in Myanmar forces thousands to flee into Thailand. All that and more coming up. In the most recent twist to the case of an Israeli tourist who entered Thailand on Friday and snuck off before receiving his COVID-19 test, only to be diagnosed with Omicron as a nationwide manhunt ensued, the man has now been determined to be COVID-19 free. The 29-year-old Israeli in question was tested on arrival for COVID-19, and authorities reported he was positive with traces of the Omicron variant too. Before those results had been determined, he headed off to Pattaya. After being refused to a hotel room without a passport, he headed to Koh Samui, where he eventually contacted the Israeli embassy to turn himself in to police as police pursued him. Police took him into custody at a restaurant, transported him to the local Bangkok hospital, and later to Koh Samui Hospital to be quarantined, both of which tested him again for COVID-19. And surprisingly, the tests from both hospitals came back negative. Then the Department of Medical Science ordered a third test. It too came back all clear. But the man still faces charges for running off before the PCR test results, which breaks a law regarding a foreigner who fails to stay where he was permitted after arrival in the country. Currently, he's at the Tongla police station in Bangkok, facing a range of charges. So far, he's seen more of Thailand than most of us do in a year. Meanwhile, a failure to coordinate tourist tracking apps is being blamed for some tourists who have avoided the health screening process, just like the situation with the missing Israeli tourist. The president of the Kata Karon Hotel Association claims that different authorities responsible for different applications have failed to coordinate the system across the country. She told the Bangkok Post that the authorities should be able to track his real-time location without having to call hotels to determine if a tracking app is working. She maintained that around 80 percent of inbound travelers were unable to download the Moshana app, supposed to be the main tool to track people's whereabouts, alert them when to take their COVID test, or warn them when they have had close contact with an infected person. She said that the system is disabled even when a single letter is changed, when users input information and is different from other apps. The system also relies on hotels inputting in the exact same spelling and lay out the information about travelers when they book in. Other travelers, she said, simply weren't traveling with a mobile phone or ran out of data or just turned their cell phones off. Two people have been arrested in Bangkok, accused of using a borrowed credit card to rack up 6.7 million baht spending spree. The pair were arrested by the Crime Suspension Division Police in Bangkapi, but they're so far denying wrongdoing. The accomplices are a 47-year-old Thai woman and her 51-year-old Thai male accomplice, believed to be a motorcycle taxi driver in Bangkok. The owner of the credit card gave the card to the accused woman in order to make a purchase of cosmetics on sale. But police said the two used the credit card to make a large number of unauthorized purchases instead. Police say they racked up sales of alcohol, cigarettes and a number of unspecified items. The two are facing charges of jointly using other people's electronic cards in a manner that is likely to cause damage to others. All in all, a total spend of 6.7 million baht on a credit card. Oof, that's a lot of cigarettes and alcohol. Drug traffickers attempted to ship out 1.2 billion baht worth of crystal meth out of Thailand and into Australia. But customs officials beat them to the punch. You'll see why soon. Authorities at the customs office seized a gigantic payload of more than 193 kilograms of crystal meth that was being smuggled out of Thailand, stuffed inside punching bags that boxers use for practice. The shipment was stopped before it was able to make its journey to Australia. After customs searched and found the crystal meth, 
hidden inside 15 different punching bags. When the customs officials cut open one of the red punching bags in front of multiple cameras, they discovered the crystal meth hidden inside the stuffing of the bag. The Australian Border Force officials celebrated the drug seizure, calling the disruption of the illegal supply chain fantastic news and noting that a strong market exists for crystal meth in Australia and the main supply is out of the notorious Golden Triangle where the borders of Thailand, Myanmar and Laos intersect. Just a few days after confirming plans to open the land border between Thailand and Laos in Nong Khai, the reopening was shelved indefinitely, whilst Thailand tries to contain any major outbreak of the Omicron variant. The cheerily named Thai Lao Friendship Bridge that links the two countries will remain closed for the time being, having earlier been planned as the first test and go land entry port. The plan had been to make the bridge at Nong Khai border Thailand's first test and go entry point. International arrivals by air allowed fully vaccinated travelers to enter Thailand with minimal quarantine since November 1st. But the land borders that are open at all require anyone crossing into Thailand to quarantine for 14 days. But now the CCSA has announced that they are suspending the entire test and go program until at least January 4 for all border entries by air or sea or land. Following the airstrikes on Myanmar's oldest ethnic army controlled area that forced thousands of refugees to flee to neighboring Thailand last week, the Karen National Union is urging the UN Security Council to recognize a no-fly zone in its territory. As fighting between the Burmese state military and the Karen's armed wing has escalated, Thailand took in about 3,400 migrants last week, and thousands more remain stranded on the Myanmar side of the border, awaiting passage. Last month, the UN Security Council, in a rare unanimous statement, voiced worry about the violence in Myanmar and asked the military to exhibit maximum restraint. In 2012, the KNU agreed to a ceasefire and tried to put an end to a self-determination struggle that began soon after Myanmar earned independence in 1948. However, since the coup, its forces have clashed with the army and it has enabled opponents of the coup to take refuge in its territories near the Thai border. And that wraps up the morning news for today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up with all the latest news around Thailand and the region. Also, visit our website at thetiger.com for more news throughout the day. Have a beautiful and safe Christmas holiday tomorrow. I'm Natty from The Tiger. Sawadee ka.